Russia says that some of its military units are returning to their bases after exercises near the border with Ukraine. The troop buildup has been at the center of Western warnings that Russia may be about to invade Ukraine, but it's not clear how many units are being withdrawn and how far back. The development came as Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz met with Russian President Vladimir Putin, who continues to insist that he has no plans to invade his neighbor. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov cautioned against any overreaction to the troop movement. As far as the exercises which are being carried out in our own territory, they were mounted as planned and are being disbanded at the end of the exercises. There's absolutely nothing strange about that. And that applies also to the joint exercises with Belarus. All of it was done according to a pre-planned timetable and has nothing to do with the way the media outlets are portraying the situation. NATO's Secretary General says there are grounds for cautious optimism, but warns there have been no signs of reduced Russian military presence on the Ukrainian border. So far, we have not seen any de-escalation on the ground, uh, not seen any uh, signs of uh, reduced uh, Russian military presence uh, on the borders of Ukraine. Um, but we will continue to monitor and to follow closely what uh, Russia is uh, doing. Right. Let's go live to Moscow. As we said, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz is there for talks with President Putin. Uh, they have finished their meeting. They're now addressing the media. Let's listen in. President Putin speaking first. St. Petersburg and uh, with Germany is celebrating 65 years of cooperation. We have discussed very comprehensively our bilateral relations and the outlook for the um, promotion. And, of course, we have also looked at the international agenda. Uh, we see Germany as a key partner of Russia, and we have always striven to increase that cooperation. You, I get the impression that uh, the German Chancellor is also um, striving for the same things as we are. This, first of all, of course, has to do with the economic side of things, uh, which has uh, been very intensive. Uh, after China, Germany is uh, the most reliable economic partner of Russia. And even during the volatile period of market change and the COVID uh, epide uh, epidemic, we noted a 26 um, percent increase in trade with Germany. And the trade turnover is some 21 billion, and we are investing 10 billion dollars. There are a great many joint ventures uh, working with uh, Russia, with uh, joint capital, and I have seen that uh, these links are very fruitful and uh, they will continue. Um, and that is the opinion of our German colleagues. Given the positive business atmosphere on the Russian markets, uh, Mr. Schultz has uh, made a number of proposals to improve uh, the dialogue between our two countries. We take them on board, we will uh, process them, and we will implement them. Uh, as far as uh, bilateral economic cooperation is concerned, uh, energy, of course, is uh, the number one. And uh, we have, over the years, um, championed uh, important pipelines, and uh, Germany has also contributed. Russia is also supplying um, some two-thirds of the needs of uh, Germany in energy, uh, and 35% uh, of uh, the natural gas is supplied by us. <coughs> And uh, last year it was some 50 to 60 um, billion metric tons. And we have continued to supply German consumers uh, with uh, energy on long term contracts and at fixed rates, whatever the European Union says. 
And of course, uh, Nord Stream 2 um, is awaiting registration. Uh, and uh, ever since December, it's uh, ready to go. Uh, we have a number of cultural products, uh, products uh, between us uh, which are uh, aimed at uh, enhancing security on the continent uh, and uh, that from an economic and ecological point of view. I must say that uh, uh, some of these, most of these are commercial, purely commercial contracts and have no political uh, intent and uh, we are also prepared to uh, transit gas to Germany through through Ukraine, uh, and that is uh, a uh, current contract, uh, and uh, obviously uh, it and I think that uh, the transit system, the transit transport uh, aspect, aspect in Ukraine will be uh, absolutely impeccable. We are also talking about the design and the supply of renewable energy, which we've also talked about today. Uh, a dialogue on all these uh, issues is uh, up and running uh, in various committees and groups and is sustainable. We have also talked about uh, climate change and maintaining climate conditions and there has been proposals about monitoring uh, exhaust gases and greenhouse gases. Uh, improving uh, equipment and uh, the mechanical side of things to uh, regulate that and also uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, on the humanitarian um, plank, uh, then we have a lot of uh, exchanges uh, in education, in science and so on. And of course, uh, that has been promoted by the St. Petersburg dialogue process. There, are, uh, there is a lot of um, interest, particularly with regard to the uh, Russian desire for legal security guarantees with uh, the US and NATO. We talked about the main uh, demands of uh, Russia, the non-extension eastwards of uh, NATO, uh, the non-deployment of uh, missiles on Russian frontiers, and uh, going back to the uh, uh, 1997 uh, pre-founding act uh, situation in uh, Europe. Uh, the US and uh, the NATO have interpreted all this uh, very uh, willfully and uh, this principle is not just about uh, ensuring one's own security system and uh, uh, joining security or military uh, blocs, which our uh, partners are always talking about, but it is also about ensuring or not in, uh, enhancing one's own security at the detriment of other countries' security. At previous uh, press conferences, I have been uh, talking a lot about this uh, with uh, the previous leaders um, who have visited uh, me recently, particularly Article 10, and we have received no answers. And we believe that Russia is a real guarantor of uh, uh, peace and uh, that has been uh, enshrined in our documents. And the answers we received from NATO and the uh, US uh, to our submitted uh, proposals of guarantees uh, do not answer or do not satisfy us. The Chancellor has put forward a number of proposals which we are not only uh, not willing to uh, discuss, but some of them we actually propose ourselves to our partners. And that has to do with um, um, indeterminate and short-range uh, missiles. We are prepared for more dialogue on that. 
and also for the import of uh, weaponry. I think that all this has to be looked at holistically, uh, comprehensively, and uh, this is obviously a priority. We also uh, discussed the situation about settling the Ukrainian conflict, as you know. Uh, Ukraine rejects the fulfillment of the Minsk agreements uh, and also the agreements which were reached uh, on uh, the summits of the Normandy group uh, in both uh, Berlin and uh, Paris. Uh, I'd just like to uh, dwell particularly on constitutional reform, amnesty, uh, and the legal status of Donbass. All this is enshrined uh, in uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, legislation, and uh, that was actually um, confirmed by uh, the current president of uh, Germany, Mr. Steinmeier, uh, and he put it forward as a guarantee of uh, security. Unfortunately, that does not materialize today. And also, I think, ignored is uh, the whole question of the um, uh, territorial integrity of the Donbass uh, area. So it is quite clear that there's uh, discrimination of the Russian-speaking population in that area at legislative level. We also touched upon the Iranian nuclear uh, program. Uh, we've always been in contact about that uh, issue, and I have to confess that our uh, positions here are really quite close. In conclusion, I'd just like to thank uh, the Chancellor for joint work and for a very useful and comprehensive dialogue. Thank you very much for your attention. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it is important to be here today. I am uh, grateful for the host and the long uh, uh, talks. We had not been spared any topic uh, between our both countries and also the international uh, countries, and this is good. It is also important to talk. Our both countries are historically and culturally uh, tied together. Our relations have various uh, topics that 90 partner cities such as also educational and youth exchange. There were 1,000 events in more than 70 cities and in such as uh, sustainability, diversity, education, our economic uh, relations also have a huge potential, such as decarbonization, such as renewable energies and uh, digitalization. Our climate changes uh, can be only achieved uh, together. Therefore, it is important that in our relations between Germany and uh, Russia, this remains also the same in future. This can only be achieved in an industrial uh, nation where we, if we want to live uh, in a good way in this planet. And there are there were reconciliations uh, between our countries after the Second World War. And uh, we also spoke about the Petersburg Dialogue, uh, which is today more important than ever. And my hope, I express also that uh, in future, such as the resolving of the blockade, we need the space for genuine dialogue where we elaborate about all topics. And also with concern, we look at the uh, smaller space for civil populations and uh, for that applies to the group Memorial, and in Germany there were no understandings why this had not been continued, which was an organization for the um, destiny of the uh, 
Russian workers. Uh, I also expressed uh, about the uh, working conditions for Deutsche Welle in Russia. We have also touched uh, critical topics, which is very important for this visit. And my visit, of course, applies to the worst and the most uh, dangerous crisis which we experience in Europe so far. The military amassing by Russia along the uh, Ukrainian border took a huge amount of time, such as also the security demands by Russia. I clarified my opinion and how we can um, value this with our European partners and that we also see this as a threat. Within this context, one cannot underline sufficiently that uh, there cannot be a reasonable reason for the amassing of those more than 100,000 troops. Therefore, uh, de-escalation is needed and it is important to avoid uh, war by these measures. President Putin, with his uh, defense minister and foreign minister yesterday, uh, we also discussed it uh, today. I fully agree. Diplomatic uh, measurements are still to be elaborated. We have to find a peaceful resolution of this crisis. Several troops had been pulled back, as we heard, which is a good sign, and we hope that this will continue. We are prepared with our allies in the EU and NATO to take steps for the improvement of our mutual interests and the NATO is prepared for bilateral negotiations and the OSCE had also prepared a dialogue process. Their principles and duties should be implemented as prepared within the OSCE and this is part of the territorial integrity and sovereignty. This includes the Ukraine, and this is non-negotiable. My utmost wish is to continue talking about this. We should not uh, be at a dead end. It is clear that the military aggression against Ukraine will have huge economic and strategic consequences, I believe we all know this very clearly. Such an escalation need to be prevented in very smart ways. And yesterday in Kiev and Moscow, today my visit is in this aspect very important. Beyond the Normandy format, together with uh, NATO and Russia and the OSCE, is a format to resolve this conflict, and we need to make developments. Therefore, it is uh, good that President Zelensky agreed yesterday that the trilateral contact group within the Minsk process had been continued and all those participants will meet for the change of the constitution. This is a good development and we have to continue. I have encouraged the president so that we can um, achieve uh, further progress. As a conclusion, for us Germans, but also for all Europeans, it is clear that sustainable security should not be just um, achieved against Russia. We all agree upon this within the EU and NATO, therefore, 
it will be possible to find a solution. I don't see it as um, non-achievable. We all need to be responsible and act accordingly. For my generation, war in Europe is beyond imagination, and we have to, as government and state leaders, make sure to prevent a war-type escalation. Let's uh, begin this joint uh, press conference between uh, Russia and uh, Germany. Uh, you can ask two questions to get the Russian president and two questions to the German Chancellor. Präsident Putin, Sie haben gleichzeitig signalisiert, dass Sie den Dialog sehen. At the same time that you do see the dialogue and also you criticize at the same time that the German Chancellor did not uh, bring enough towards these uh, demands and securities from President Zelensky. Do you now currently avoid, will you? And Mr. Chancellor, my question to you, how do you evaluate the situation after these talks now? Do you think there had been developments made and what should be the next step? As far as uh, war in Europe is uh, concerned, uh, the Chancellor has just now said that people of his uh, generation, and I'm the same generation, uh, know what war in Europe is. And of course, he said that uh, in relation to uh, Ukraine, uh, but uh, we we are actually divided here by the NATO bloc. Just look at uh, Yugoslavia, a major uh, military operation against one of the European capitals, Belgrade. That happened already without any sanctions uh, by the uh, Security Council of the United Nations. And that's a very bad example. But it happened. That's the first thing I want to say on that. Secondly, do we want it or not? Of course we don't. And it is for that reason that we submitted a proposal as to a negotiation process as a result of which there should be a uh, guarantee for security for everybody, including our country. Unfortunately, we've already said this, we have not yet received any kind of substantive answer to this uh, submission. Even in those documents which were sent to uh, uh, our partners uh, from uh, by US and uh, NATO member states, uh, there are elements that we can discuss, but uh, we want to actually look at that together with the Founding Act. We hope very much, Chancellor, that dialogue will happen precisely like that. And depending on how it develops, the situation will develop on all other fronts. And we are concerned, just as much concerned as you, I assure you. I believe um, we have a situation now where it is important to use all possibilities and not to leave a stone unturned to enable a peaceful development. This is the reason why I reported that uh, the preparations, conditions are announced for the Minsk process. Therefore, 
These um, talks can be taken up on a trilateral, trilateral uh, contact group in order to find a peaceful solution in the Ukraine, uh, in between Donbass and the Ukrainian government. This is important. It is important for me to hold talks there within the trilateral contact group and Minsk should be included and we should work on this. And again, the situation was a little different in Yugoslavia. There was the danger of genocide, which had to be uh, prevented. And in the meantime, we have a peaceful development and the, the countries have a very different perspective towards the European Union. And this is a good sign. I'd just like to add there that uh, in our assessment, what is happening in Donbass is genocide. I have a big question to both of you, if you will allow me. Chancellor, you've just come back from uh, Kiev, where you had a meeting with uh, President Zelensky. In your view, do you think that he wants and will uh, observe the Minsk agreements uh, as they were written down? And do you think there's a possibility for peace on that basis? And uh, Mr. Putin, today we learned about uh, a certain drawback of uh, troops and the deputies of uh, the uh, Duma asked you about the uh, recognition of the uh, Donetsk, uh, the uh, uh, Lugansk and uh, Donetsk uh, People's Republic. And do you think there's a real threat uh, connected with that uh, project? And President Putin, Mr. Schroeder, one of your old friends and also uh, director of Gazprom, has actually criticized Europe. What have you got to say about that? Well, as for the first question, voting in the Duma, I've just actually been to a press conference or heard about the results of the press conference about that. Uh, and then the second one was the uh, partial uh, withdrawal of uh, our exercise troops. Uh, what can I say in comment of that? Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say that uh, there's nothing to comment about the uh, Lugansk and Donetsk uh, situation. Uh, and I've got nothing to comment either on the uh, uh, withdrawal of our troops, but they are connected, of course, and uh, all of this has to do with uh, public opinion, and uh, they feel that very sensitively, the people down there in Donbass. Our people uh, sympathize with that. Uh, we support the inhabitants of Donbass, and I hope that the situation there will really change radically for the best for them. There was an overwhelming uh, vote in favor of the first project, and uh, as far the Republic, so the um, vote was open, a free vote. Uh, party discipline had no role in that. And uh, the majority of the deputies supported uh, the uh, proposal, which was actually put forward by the opposition. Uh, so we will take the view that Everything must be done in order to uh, settle the problem in Donbass. And as the, but as the German Chancellor said, first of all, uh, we have to look at the non-fulfillment of the Minsk agreement. We hope very much that our partners uh, across the ocean and in Europe, uh, first of all, uh, and particularly France, uh, will. Um, 
put uh, influence the uh, Kiev uh, uh, government to do that. As far as uh, Schroeder and uh, Nord Stream 2 is concerned, uh, today I said to the German Chancellor that uh, we agreed in the beginning of uh, 2000 uh, with President Kuchma, as he was at the uh, time, uh, the uh, project which was uh, submitted by Mr. Schroeder, and we agreed, and we actually signed an agreement uh, to set up an international consortium, Russia, Ukraine, and Germany, and possibly other European partners, created a consortium uh, for the governance of that, not about buying it or anything like that, but uh, to take governance under our wing and to make sure that uh, resources should be strategically developed. And then the new uh, Ukrainian government under uh, the next uh, Ukrainian president uh, opted out of it. And uh, then, of course, we looked at the whole question of reliability of supplies to Germany. And we decided to go for uh, Nord Stream 2, uh, whereas today Germany is receiving through that route uh, 55 billion me cubic uh, meters of gas, and that on a long-term contract, which, as I've already said, three, four, five times seven times less, at seven times less the price than otherwise. This benefits, of course, households, uh, industries. It's five times cheaper, five times cheaper. I think you ought to ask the Germans to open their wallet and say, are they prepared to pay three, four, five times more? They don't want to do that. And that is thanks to Mr. Schroeder, because that's a result of his work. As far as his presence on the board of directors of Gazprom is concerned, today many people in Europe uh, are worried about whether there will be regular supplies of uh, Russian uh, energy sources uh, from Russia to Germany. I think that if that decision is taken, that is the decision to make him a director of uh, Gazprom. It, it will obviously be uh, monitored by independent experts. That is, you know, the order of the day, which we respect. And, of course, he will be looking particularly at the interests of his own country, uh, the Federal Republic of Germany and Euro Europeans, and he will be able to influence the decisions which are taken uh, at the board. And we can he ensures objective information from Gazprom. I think that's only to the benefit of all of us. Whether or not it's going to be done, I think the elections are coming up in June. That's a, a question for Gazprom and for independent uh, assessors. As far as uh, Nord Stream 2 is concerned, uh, his uh, presence there on the board of directors is uh, very important because he monitored uh, Nord Stream 1 and uh, he knows the experience of it. And I'd just like to recall uh, uh, I'd just like to recall that five German companies are actually funding that. This North Stream 2 is ready for, has been ready for industrial uh, exploitation as from December last. And, you know, we can supply by that route. That's all. Zunächst war die Frage nach den 
First of all, the question regarding the Minsk agreement, everyone needs to comply to this. This applies to the government of Ukraine, Russia, Germany, France, whoever is a part of the political process. Therefore, it is important that everyone contributes. One contribution is the legal uh, well, the laws, how to resolve the three tasks which I had already mentioned beforehand in my introduction statement, such as the um, elections with the Steinmeier formal and the constitution, and then in the trilateral format between Russia and the OSCE, uh, we need to talk um, with everyone Con participates. This should be respected by everyone. And uh, I wish that um, everyone just um, gets a grip and uh, complies. The question is where the next step will be done, and the uh, preparations are all available. All we need is that everyone gets a grip, and of course, the result otherwise would be to ignore the Minsk agreement if the resolution had been a reality today. So therefore, we need to realize it's not all about the resolution, otherwise uh, this would be then a political catastrophe which means, which would mean that, that um, everyone would return to the Minsk agreement. The second point, it is, I would not like to comment the uh, activities of uh, former German politician. In regards to the pipeline itself, these are all resources. We agreed that the pipeline works uh, via Ukraine, Belarus, and Poland uh, in, in all together with the agreement. And we will um, ensure a peaceful development in Europe and uh, avoid an aggression in the Ukraine, therefore, then there will be consequences and and those we will understand the political realities in which we are currently we should not point the finger at um, the other. We all make sure to maintain the peace. Michael Fischer. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Chancellor. You mentioned just now that uh, you discussed um, the difficult uh, task, Memorial and Deutsche Welle. There are other topics as well. The, the medical uh, force full tests. Did you discuss those questions? And what is your conclusion regarding the German-Russian relations altogether? In the next days and weeks, there will be further troops. Can you exclude the attack on the Ukraine today? Can you, I believe this was a question to Mr. Putin, can you rule out war in the next uh, future? 
Geld dafür abzugeben, dass sie über meine nicht kommen worden ist. Können Sie sich aber vielleicht ein Moratorium und Regierungschef, es wird ja jetzt gesagt, von der Seite, äh, das ansonsten ein Wort zu geben, dass die Ukraine nicht in die NATO aufgenommen vielleicht sogar in Jahrzehnten unrealistisch ist? Um, the, the question could not be, um, was not really audible. There were some technical issues. Regarding Mr. Navalny. In many um, opportunities, I made this position clear regarding Mr. Navalny. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to answer your question. We're dealing with this according to a schedule, and we are basing ourselves on the real circumstances. The feed is breaking up. This is the interpreter talking. The feed is breaking up, and I can't hear anything. Decisions will be made diplomatically. Смещение. The deployment of uh, military infrastructure of the NATO bloc since uh, 1997 and uh, assault uh, weapon systems near our frontier. We are prepared also to talk about other problems in the answers which we have re received, but what I have just said is of major importance and our top priority. Now, with regard to what was the second part of your question? I scribbled something here and I can't read it. Es ging es ging um den Truppenabzug. Von der ukrainischen Grenze und um die uh, pulling back of the uh, troops ah, from the Ukrainian right. border and also uh, the withdrawal expansion of NATO. Um, um, uh, um, uh, on the decisions of NATO, you, you came up with a wonderful sentence there. They say that in the coming years, Ukraine will not be in NATO. What does that mean? They say that. We have to agree what they say in international relations means. For 30 years we've been told that there won't be any kind of uh, NATO expansion, not one inch eastwards. And today we see the infrastructure of NATO on our doorstep. Moreover, uh, the whole question of NATO, Ukraine joining NATO uh, is raised and they say, well, it won't be tomorrow. What about day after tomorrow? What does that actually change for us, historically speaking? Absolutely nothing. We hear that Ukraine is not ready to join NATO. We know that. And at the same time, that they say tomorrow it's not going to join. But you know, by the time they got ready for it, uh, it may be too late for us. So we have to decide this question now, right now, in the very near future, we have to have a negotiation process for these. We very much hope that our worried partners will listen to this and will take the appropriate steps.
Uh, first question I should like to put to President Putin. Yesterday you did not talk about the uh, outlook for negotiations. Do you foresee a regime of uh, protracted uh, negotiations in the future? And do you think that the uh, main points which you mentioned uh, will be addressed? And my second question is to uh, Mr. Scholz. Do you think that there is a constructive settlement of the whole question is going to be uh, solved, that is to say, of broadcasting Deutsche Welle to uh, Russia and uh, RT to Germany? Well, as far as uh, Deutsche Welle is concerned, uh, we did actually address that uh, with the Chancellor today. The work of uh, Deutsche Welle in uh, Germany and RT in the Federal Republic. I don't really want to go into details uh, so as not to uh, complicate matters, but uh, we agreed that we would think about a solution to that problem. As far as the next point is concerned, whether or not it is uh, uh, whether or not these uh, negotiations are going to be lengthy and not uh, end up in anything, uh, not be uh, efficient. We have been thinking about that a lot, uh, particularly with the force ministries and uh, so on. And our conclusion essentially is uh, that we are apprehensive that uh, the negotiation process started by us uh, about our essential uh, questions. We are very worried that that uh, should not be uh, stretched out by our partners and uh, that we should not uh, have our position worsened in that whole process, as has happened uh, hitherto uh, in many, many cases. And obviously, from our point of view, we understand and we will be discussing with our partners. Uh, we know what we're going to be discussing and what we will not allow. First of all, regarding the question, the applications uh, can be uh, forwarded um, on legal grounds and then they can be processed and ratified. So you can all um, be assured about it, but there is, first of all, a, a legal uh, process um, within the rule of law. In regards of our negotiations and talks, uh, the positions are different, therefore it took us a long while to talk. It is important, however, to talk and the and NATO has uh, responded to the interests of uh, Russia. Russia is not, um, has not agreed. However, the questions that uh, NATO formulated, we don't agree with them, but um, it is good to discuss some of those points, and it is important to avoid a dangerous situation in Europe, and everyone knows there had been a small uh, conditions for future talks and we begin with the questions of the resolving of the conflict in the Ukraine and the Minsk agreement to which everyone needs to comply and we all need to talk together. This also applies to the different um, positions of the uh, of NATO's eastern expansion. 
This is, however, not on the agenda. Everyone knows about it, and uh, this is not a topic which we will come across in our offices. I don't know how long um, Mr. President uh, is planning to stay in office. I believe uh, it won't be forever. Therefore, we have this task today to do something to come to a political agreement without anyone having to give up the principle and the political principle. And um, this is um, how we have the political peace and security in Europe. This um, can be achieved with transparency and the uh, control of uh, arming and weapons. This is a starting point, and this should be used to be responsible and justify our responsibility. Colleagues, uh, the press conference is over. Uh, that was Russia's President Vladimir Putin and Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz there speaking to the media after their meeting today. Chancellor Scholz said that uh, he expressed in that meeting with President Putin that uh, the West sees uh, Russia's military troop build-up as a threat. He said that de-escalation is urgently uh, necessary. President Putin said we don't want war in Europe. That's why we set forward security proposals, he said. So far, there's been no constructive response to our proposals. There are some elements in the response that are up for discussion. He also said that there is genocide in Ukraine's Donbass region. Let's go live now to Moscow. Al Jazeera's Dorsa Jabari is there. Dorsa, uh, what do you make of what you heard? Well, it seemed like the two men had a lot to discuss. Uh, the Russian president said that uh, the meeting was uh, comprehensive and uh, useful, and the two men met for over three hours um, behind closed doors. And I think they seem to have uh, managed to have some really positive d discussions. I think the Russian president said that he is willing to talk to the United States as well as NATO to hammer out the issues that he, he has with what is happening within the 30-member alliance. He said that the issue of Ukraine is part of a larger picture and that it needs to be addressed now. NATO's further expansion is not something that can be delayed any longer. He said Russia wants to have this conversation now. Whether or not Ukraine joins, not today or tomorrow, that's not the issue. The fact is, what they say is, whenever they decide to join or if they decide to join, someday if they decide to join, this kind of language, he said, is political language that is very ambiguous and it needs to be addressed now before it's too late. And uh, he also announced um, there are a lot of economic uh, ties between Russia and uh, Germany. He said that uh, Russia will invest another $10 billion in the German economy. And uh, he also said that uh, two-thirds of Germany's energy needs are uh, supplied by Russia and that that relationship will not change. When it came to talking about specifically the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, which has yet to become operational, uh, the Russian president was hopeful that it will be soon. And uh, the German chancellor managed yet again not to answer any specific uh, responses to the possibility of that pipeline, not because coming operational as a result of possible U.S. sanctions on Russia should there be uh, an, an um, incursion or any kind of invasion into Ukraine. Uh, the Russian president said that just like his, uh, the German chancellor, there, he does not want war. He said our generation certainly uh, does not want to see another war. And I think the both, uh, both men shared the sentiment that dialogue is the way forward. Uh, we saw a very relaxed Vladimir Putin. I think his demeanor was very telling about how comfortable he felt with the German chancellor. And I think their dialogue was, as he said, productive and comprehensive. Whether or not it will translate anything uh, substantial in terms of a diplomatic push um, in the coming days, we'll have to wait and see. When the Russian president was also asked about the uh, withdrawal of some of those troops alongside the border with Ukraine and his country's western borders, he said, 
this is not something he wants to comment on, um, but he said this is something that was planned as a as did the uh, defense minister, Sergei Shoigo, during a meeting with Vladimir Putin on Monday. So I think we got a better picture of where things stand at the moment. But the one point he was very uh, much strongly um, criticizing the Ukrainian government was about Donbass region in eastern Ukraine. He said what is happening there is a violation of the Minsk agreement that was signed in 2015. And he also said what is taking place in that region is uh, tantamount to genocide. So he, I think um, he he said that the Normandy format needs to be much more um, seriously uh, pushed forward in terms of uh, carrying out that uh, ceasefire that is supposed to be taking place yeah. there. So all in all, a very comprehensive uh, one, nearly one hour press conference by the two leaders. Dorsa, many thanks indeed. Dorsa Jamari in Moscow. Let's go to Berlin. Al Jazeera's Dominic Kane is there. Dominic, what did you make of what you heard? To what extent was Chancellor Scholz treading a fine line between, between what is Western allies expected to hear there and what is domestic audience expects to hear? When you consider what Mr. Schultz is saying, what he's been doing both here in Moscow and then when he was in Kiev yesterday and then when he was in the White House the Monday before last, he's been very careful to use language which is not inflammatory. So he has never, in terms of public consumption that is, referred to Nord Stream 2. That's the thing to say here. And he has been very clear about saying that Germany doesn't want to give weapons to Ukraine. He's been very clear that the European position is that they don't want war in Europe. But let's be clear about the parameters within which Mr. Schotts is acting. He has, as was made clear by President Putin, he has an economy, that's Schotts, has an economy which depends to a large extent on Russian gas, natural gas piped into the country and which then also goes on to Western Europe. So what you have effectively there is a box within which Mr. Schotts is trying to act. Pretty clear that he's saying Normandy format, let's use all forms of diplomacy, but He's always talked about de-escalation, but from his perspective, de-escalation is a process, not an event. So when he sees the troops being withdrawn, then he's clear that he wants more troops to be withdrawn in order to make clear to the Ukrainians okay. that this is a permanent, peaceful move. Dominic, many thanks indeed. Al Jazeera's Dominic Kane there live in Berlin. There'll be much more coverage of... Uh, what we heard from that press conference and indeed the crisis on Ukraine's border. Coming up in the news hour with Kamal, which is just minutes away now. I'll see you again. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.